بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Brothers and sisters in the next um, few moments that I'm with you inshallah I want to make a couple of comparisons I don't know about you but I'm thankful to Allah for being alive I'm very grateful to Allah that he has allowed me to be Muslim I'm happy to be at this conference not as a, a speaker but as an observer to listen to the other speakers I'm happy to walk through the conference and, and meet so many of you, your families, your, your children I'm happy to have been born here in America. I won't know the next time you go and make wudu. Muslims, we make ablution every day. I want you to be aware that right now there's a global crisis in water. Every time you go to the wudu station, and you're putting water on your face and your hands and water is going on the floor and we're wasting water. I want you to remember that there are 1.8 million children around this world who die every year because a lack of water and sanitation. Part of my experience from the nation of Islam, we learned about our home called Earth, 196,940,000 square miles and 139,685,000 square miles of water. 70% of the Earth is water. Yet people are dying because they can't get enough of water. You know that in many nations, unlike us, you get thirsty go to the kitchen kitchen and turn on the faucet and get some water go to the refrigerator and get a cold glass of water go to the supermarket and, and get cases of water but in many nations around the world people have to go miles they have to travel miles to go get water one estimate suggests that some 40 billion hours a year are spent collecting water in sub-Saharan Africa that represents a, a year's labor for the entire workforce in France. And who's collecting this water? Is it the men? No, it's not the men. It's the women and the girls. They go out and they get water and they bring water back to the family. And if they don't bring water, they die because water is the foundation of life. And if you have no water, you die. Time spent collecting water represents a heavy burden on women. In Mozambique, rural Senegal, and eastern Uganda, women spend on an average of 15 to 17 hours a week 
connecting water that we take for granted and you go into the bathrooms and you go to the water station and you see all the water that's wasted because we have no sensitivity of the needs of the people of the world. <laughs> Sheikh Shibli, you know I always call you. The average American, Sheikh Shibli, you are the average American. Sheikh Jamal Badawi, even though you're from Canada, you are the average American. The average American spends the average American over 50 spends five years waiting in line. What you waiting for? I'm in the bank waiting for my transition. I'm on the gas line. Five years waiting. What are you doing in that time that you're waiting? How much dhikr are you doing? Recitation of Quran. Now here's the sticker. This is the big one. Naeem. In a lifetime, the average United States resident eats more than 50 tons of food. You like that? This is funny. Between 13 and 16,000 gallons of water. 50 tons of food. Even Abdul Rahman, a little brother like you, 50 tons of food. Yet people are dying over the earth because there's not enough food. And Americans, uh, that's the average, but Americans love to eat. Watch the Americans, look at the Americans, and I would say some of them probably eat a hundred uh, tons of food in a lifetime. Read a verse in Quran that said that Allah, He takes the responsibility to feed every crawling thing, everything in the universe, Allah feeds. Imagine that trillions and trillions of animals and insects and plants and out of that, He feeds every one of them. Every one of you in this auditorium, you eat. Some of you eat three times a day. Some of you eat more than that. Anytime you, you want to eat, you get up in the middle of the night and you eat and you eat and you eat all day long. You eat and you eat and you eat. Then why people die? If Allah's a razak and he takes upon the responsibility to feed everybody, why is it so many people starving around the world? Not because of Allah. Allah doesn't do anything wrong. He did everything right. He gave enough provisions for all of the universe. But there are some greedy people. Greedy people that look respectable. They have suits and ties and they work in Washington, D.C. And many of them, believe it or not, are responsible for some of the suffering of the people on the planet Earth. Three things. I have learned from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. There are three people were born speaking from the cradle. One of them, Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. Miracle. But I have never read in all my reading of Quran and Sunnah and Hadith and, and the Bible and the Torah and the Injil and all the books of history, I have never ever read that any time a baby was born with clothing. 
every child is born is born naked and every one of you here in this convention got clothing some sisters please don't get angry at me sisters some sisters came with five uh, luggages of clothing and they just live up the street and some brothers the same thing how many pairs of shoes do you own how many shoe how many pairs of shoes have you all earned or owned since you were born but yet you were born naked and you were born with no shoes where did you get the shoes where did you get the clothing where did you get the food what do you think you have a right to something you have it because Allah gave it to you love gave all of us born naked born uh, uh, they call it uh, without shoes barefoot thank you and guess what there's a rule there's a law I don't care how much money you have there's a rule it's a law it is as old as the universe and the law is this no matter how much money you have you can't take it with you King Tut tried to take it with him it said that he was buried with so much wealth they said that one of his coffins made of pure gold worth more than six million dollars and while some people were burying him and all that wealth they're going like this hmm. I'll be back here tonight <laughs> people try to take it with them but you can't take it with you in order to benefit some money you got to use it while you're here and if you don't lose use it you lose it that's the, that's the law that's the law that's the way it is you can't take it with you so you have some time to, to, to use it how much time do you have I don't know if I'm lucky, if I'm America, I'm good health, maybe I live to be 90, uh, 78 years old, 79, 80 years old, I don't know, maybe 100 years old, but sooner or later, you lose it all. All the clothing, all the food, all the shoes, it's gone. So you got to use it now. You got to spend it now. If you don't spend it, you lose it. That's the rules. So born naked. Christians say it naked I came into the world and naked I go out you you came in with nothing you go out with nothing oh we'll put we'll shroud you shake we'll, we'll, we'll shroud you all right we'll give you that but we're gonna take your coffee and and, and and we're gonna take your glasses and you can't use it right and, 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 I'm sorry we're gonna take your underwear You can't use your underwear. Not there. All gone. Born, die, resurrected. I leave you with this thought. Something that the prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. He said, You will be born barefooted. Hofatin. Barefooted. How many of you been to the mall? Love to go shopping, love to go to the mall, love to buy shoes. Everybody will be born barefooted. You know barefooted is a sign of, see, the, if you look at all those uh, uh, movies about poor people around the world, they have no shoes, that's a sign of poverty. But guess what? Everybody will be born barefooted. Or resurrected and naked and then the prophet said peace and blessing be upon them Ibrahim. <laughs> 
awalu yuksa yawmal qiyama ibrahim and the first one to be dressed on the day of resurrection will be Abraham, peace and blessing be upon him. That great honor will go to him before anyone else is dressed. We will be there naked. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, I said, Ya Rasulullah, won't people be looking at one another? Who will do? Look, there's Paris Hilton. No, 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 uh uh. No, no, no. Not on that day. No, no, no. Not on that day. We be too concerned about ourselves even to notice that somebody is naked. But believe me, you will be naked as you are from the beginning. Allah will resurrect you. You'll be naked again and you will be naked until Allah dress you. Now, who's going to make the world better? 50 tons of food. Hey, I thank Allah that he's given us the ability to get rid of the food after we eat it. You get my point, man? How much waste would 50 tons of... Oh, that's, that's another issue. That's a lot of waste. That's why this world stinks so much. No, I'm, I'm serious. And this is why the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said... There's nothing but good smell in Jannah. Jannah smells good. But this earth, it doesn't smell good. Because that's the nature of this earth. Who's going to do it? Who's going to help these people around the world? For those Muslims who say, Brother Imam Siraj, this is the Qadr of Allah. It's the Qadr of Allah. These people, this is their circumstances. It's the Qadr of Allah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, we know it's the Qadr of Allah. I know that. But it is also the Qadr of Allah if those people who believe in Allah in the last day and love humanity, that they're going to help their brothers in humanity by giving them water, giving them food, giving them what they need for their sustenance. That's part of the Qadr of Allah too. The question is, what are we going to do? I'm suggesting to you, I am an American. I was born in America. I'm suggesting to you that the answer is not America. It is not the foreign policy of our government right now to really help the people in the world who really need it. And I'm going to show you why. Every day, wallahi, if you read newspapers, magazines, turn on the television, turn on the internet, read a book, and it will bear witness that something that Allah and His Messenger have said, I bear witness to that. I'm going to give you one example, and then I'm going to close almost kind of sort of American democracy we want to export democracy of the world we want to bring democracy to the world uh -uh, no 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 I would rather Islam because Islam is sanctioned by Allah it's in the Quran it's in the Sunnah that's what I want I don't know about you I'm fine as an American, I'm fine as democracy is the government. That's fine. I'm not arguing that. But you want to bring democracy around the world? Let us see. Uh, Wednesday was the 4th of July, right? Wednesday. You know how I spent the 4th of July, Dr. Jamal? Myself, Imam Alameen Abdul Latif, he's the mayor of the Manchester Shore of New York. Imam Talib Abdul Rashid and other brothers in New York City, we met together in a planning session for the Muslims, how to help the Muslims. Because that's what I want to do, I want to help the Muslims. Now, I'm not saying you can't go barbecue. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that. If you wanted to do that, it's fine. I'm not arguing with that. But I am arguing that the Muslim leadership have to spend time planning for the Muslims and planning for the world. That's what we're supposed to be doing. If this, this is the leadership, Allah made us. He put that responsibility on us. The question is, what are we doing with the responsibility that Allah gave us? And I'm not giving it to nobody. I'm not giving it to the world. I'm giving it to whom Allah told us to have it. Who should have it? And these are the Muslims. This is what Allah says in Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessing be upon him. You remember Scooter Libby? Scooter Libby, you remember? He was the chief of staff of, staff of um, Vice President Cheney. Now, 
he was arrested and convicted of perjury, I think it was, obstruction of justice, and, and, and what? A fraud? I don't think he was convicted of fraud. Was he convicted of fraud? Anyway, he got 30 years in prison, about 30 months in prison, right? 30 months in prison, uh, two year probation, and $250,000 fine. Went through the whole process, found guilty by peers, and he was found guilty. Now, the President of the United States of America said that he felt that the prison sentence was too harsh. So he decided to commute his sentence. And how many of the 30 months, two and a half years, how many days, uh, I'm sorry, how many hours, I'm sorry, how many minutes, oh, I'm sorry, how many seconds did he spend in jail? Huh? What? Zero. He spent no time, a felon, convicted felon, because the president commuted it. Now, don't get me wrong, the president had the right to do that. He has the right. It's in the Constitution. He has a right for clemency. He could forgive the whole thing. And by the way, this is your brother speaking. I think it's going to happen. I think he's going to get rid of the $250,000 fine. This is my Allah knows best. I think he's going to get rid of the two-year two probation. You watch. You keep listening. Now, we were at the meeting, the Imam's meeting, and Imam Tyler brought, out, brought us uh, a, a, to our attention a, uh, the New York Times newspaper. And, and subhanAllah, I want to read to you brothers and sisters a letter written to the editor. And that summarizes every, anything that I could say. Listen to this and all I'm doing is quoting and reading. This is uh, New York Times uh, editorial, Wednesday, July 4th. And this is a letter to the editor. Listen carefully. Dear editor, when George W. Bush was governor of Texas, he presided over more than 150 executions. In more than one third of the cases, 57 in all, lawyers representing condemned inmates asked then governor George Bush for a commutation of sentence so that the inmates would serve life in prison rather than to face execution. Some of these inmates have been represented by lawyers who slept during trials. Some were mentally retarded. Some were juveniles at the time they committed the crime for which they were sentenced to death. In all these cases, Governor Bush refused to commute their sentences, saying that the inmates had full access to the judicial system. Scooter Libby, Libby Jr., had the best lawyers that money can buy. His crime cannot be attributed to youth or retardation. He has expressed no remorse whatsoever for lying to a grand jury or participating in the administrative's effort to mislead the American people about the war in Iraq. President Bush's commutation of Mr. Libby's sentence is certainly legal, but it just as surely offends the fundamental constitutional value of equality. Because President Bush signed a commutation, a rich and powerful man will spend not a day in prison while 57 poor and poorly connected human beings died because Governor Bush refused to lift a pen for them. David R. Rowe, Houston, July 3rd, 207. The writer is a professor 
at the University of Houston Law Center who represents death row inmates, including several who sought commutation from then Governor Bush. You know, brothers and sisters, I love Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. He's the messenger of Allah. The success of the world depends upon our obedience to that man Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make no doubt about it. One thing happened in history, I recount to you and then I'll conclude. A woman, a very noble woman, you know the narration, stole something and the people were concerned and they wanted someone to seek intercession for her and they chose Osama bin Zaid. Osama bin Zaid. And he went to speak to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, on her behalf. And the Prophet والسلام, was angry. And he said, the people before you were destroyed. For whenever the high noble people committed any crime, they would let them go. But when the poor people and the weak people, when they committed a crime, they put full execution of the law. No. No more law, I swear by Allah. La anna Fatima bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I swear by Allah that even if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, if she stole, I, Muhammad, would cut off her hand. What is he saying? You cannot undermine your very legal system, undermine the idea that everyone has free access and will be treated equally. Nah. Nah. Uh-uh. You want the world to be better? You want the world to be at peace? It's not $500 billion a defense budget. It's common sense, decency, justice, justice. I'm not even asking for mercy, just justice. Justice in Iraq, justice in Palestine, justice in Kashmir, justice. If you have justice, we will have peace. So I close with this. You know the beautiful thing about Islam? is Dino Rija. It is a religion of hope. I want us to make dua for a brother, a lovely brother of ours, Sheikh Mohammed Nassim, right now in a hospital in Houston, Texas. Our beloved teacher for years. He has touched my life and touched the lives of many of you. He's very sick right now. Ask Allah the Almighty, Allah can do what He pleases. Well, I can Allah, yes, Allah, my you read. Allah does whatever He wants to do. If Allah wants to make Sheikh Nassim to live for 900 years, Allah can do it. It's up to Him. But we must ask Allah to give Him, to heal Him. Ask Allah to give Him strength. But you know the beautiful thing about Sheikh Nassim and the rest of us, our, my grandmother, your grandmothers, and grandfathers, with the hope in Allah that we can see them again. Yes. Allahumma la Aisha illa Aisha al-Akhirah. Oh Allah, there is no life except the life of the hereafter. How many of you been married 10 years? Raise your hand. Good. How many been married 20 years? Raise your hand. Sheikh Shibli still got his hand up. How many been married 30 years? Ra Put your hand up. Oh, how many been married 40 years? Raise your hand. Allah Akbar. How many been married 50 years? Raise your hand. Brother, 50 years? You're not even 50 years old. Must have been an arranged marriage. But you know what? Things change as we grow older. 
Sometimes we're not as strong as we used to be. Sometimes we're not as thin as we used to be. Sometimes we're not as healthy as we used to be. I make dua for a brother in Atlanta, Georgia. I know him. Been married to his wife 40, 50 years, and she has Alzheimer's disease, but he's with her every day. I mentioned yesterday about this sister whose husband is growing blind and she takes him to the masjid fajr every day. I'm talking about some of your children who have diseases, have cancer. I'm talking about you, your mother and father on deathbed. But the beautiful thing about Islam, no matter how bad your situation is, we always have the hereafter to look forward to. There's no life except the life of the hereafter. This is only a short period of time. Don't get caught up with this life. And do you think that you will go to Jannah without being tested and tried? We will be tested and tried. But the point is, stay the course. Stay on Islam. Don't you ever deviate from Islam. Don't take anything, not one iota from the Quran, not one iota from the Sunnah. Don't let people intimidate you. They're trying to intimidate you to change the Quran. Don't change the Quran. Don't be afraid to say jihad. If Allah mentions jihad, he should be the lie. Don't you be afraid to mention what Allah has mentioned you have done. Don't you be ashamed of Quran and Sunnah. Keep your, keep your faith in Allah and the Messenger. The only way that you can help the American people, don't change the Quran, don't change the Sunnah. The only way you can help America is bring them Islam, bring them the truth, tell them the truth about the hereafter. And if you tell them that, the American people will grow. And America will be the safest nation on the earth and the most beloved nation on the earth because America would have acted in justice and mercy because they would have followed the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a, these are testing times for the Muslims. And they will get worse. Somebody asked the question, what will be the future of Islam in America? Wrong question. Question is, what do you want the future of Islam in America? What you want it to be like? And what are you willing to do to bring it about? That stands. That's the question. And I'm saying that Ikna has taken a step Isna has taken a step. Mass has taken a step. Mana has taken a step. Care has taken a step. Imam Warafadi Muhammad has taken a step. The community of Imam Jamil and Amin have taken a step. Collectively, we're taking a step so that we can work together for the pleasure of Allah to bring Islam in its purity to the people of the world. I ask you tonight, brothers and sisters, of all the programs that ICNA have, all of them are good. I'm partial to two of them, personally. One is Dawa, Why Islam? And the other one is ICNA Relief. When I see ICNA coming and raising money, to help people that are suffering around the world, even in this country. I applaud that. I would like to take 10 minutes to raise for ICNA money that it needs for its projects. Everyone needs money for their projects and the money that you have is just a test. I would like in 10 minutes to give ICNA a check for $300,000 in 10 minutes. Do not leave. Do not go. We want to hear from our Sheikh, our Sheikh Jamal Badawi next. But before we do, I'd like to ask you to give to ICNA $300,000. I need you to turn the light on the audience so I can see you. Could you turn on the lights, please, somebody who's responsible? Hello? There you go. 
I want somebody to raise their hand and say, Allah has blessed me. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I have clean water to drink. I've had my share of 13,000 to 16,000 gallons of water. I've had my share of 50 tons of food. I've had my share. And I would like to give to others. I want to see how many of you will give $10,000 for Ikna, raise your hand. 10,000, raise your hand. There's one, Allahu Akbar. Raise them up high, brother, so we can see you. Please go to the brother. Raise them up, $10,000. Jazakallah khaira. I would see, I would love to see 10 people give $10,000 for itna because you realize Allah has blessed you and you want to share with what Allah has given to you. Inna li kulli ummatin fitna wa fitna to ummatil mal. Every nation has a test and the test of my ummah is money. You know what Jesus said? Peace and blessing be upon him. Or what they say Jesus said? I don't know if he said it or not. Sheikh Fahim, I don't know if he said it. They said he said it. I don't know if he did. He said, it is easier for a camel to go to the, need, to the needle, uh, to the eye of a needle, than a rich man to go to the kingdom of God. The Prophet Muhammad didn't say that, peace and blessing be upon him, but he did say, يَذَكُلُ فُقَرَ الْجَنَّةَ قَبْلَ أَغْلِنَا أَبِي خَمْسِ مَا تَعَمِنْ And poor people will go to Jannah. These barefooted poor people with hardly no water to drink, they will go to Jannah 500 years before rich people. Doesn't mean every poor person, don't mean every rich person. But it means that we will be tested by the wealth that we have. Who will give $10,000 for Ikna? Raise your hand. 10000 Brother, let me see you. Sister, let me see you. Raise your hand. $10,000 for Ikna. Anyone? Anyone else? I feel there have to be at least one more. Anyone? Is somebody hand up? Brother, let me say this to you, my beloved brother who made this wonderful, charitable, generous donation. May Allah bless you with the best in this life and the best of the hereafter. Kulu Amin. Quickly, in an audience this large, it should not be difficult to get 10 people to give $5,000. I want you to raise your hand and I want to count 10 people with $5,000 for Ikna in order to do this great work that it has in its program, raise your hand if you want to give a donation of $5,000 to ICNA. Raise your hand and let me count you. Raise them up high. There's one, Allah Akbar. There's two, Allah Akbar. There's two, no less, no less than 10. Raise them up high, let me see you. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand, brothers and sisters. There's three, Allah Akbar, Jazakallah Khaira. There's three, ten at least, five thousand dollars. Bunya al-Islamu ala khams. Islam is built on five. One of five thousand dollars to show your commitment, to show your appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa taala, having given you five thousand dollars. Who else? There's, there's three. Five thousand. And be cool, brothers and sisters. Spend now, and inshallah, there's number four. Allah Akbar. There's number four. Who will be the fifth one? Ten people, quickly. My time is almost away. A brother in the back. There's number five. Alhamdulillah. Do it quickly. Raise your hand so I can see. Another one. Number six. Six sitta. Raise them up high, brother and sister. We can do this quickly. I got minutes to go. Minutes to go. There's number six. Inshallah, we got another program. Inshallah, who else? Five thousand dollars. We have sitta. We have seven. Who will honor us to be the seventh one? Seven is a good number. It's a wonderful number. Who will honor us tonight to be the seventh? Allah Akbar. Seven. Number seven. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Seven people. Who will be the eighth person? I. Huh? Eight. Number eight. Allahu Akbar. Number eight. Familia. Who will be tisa? I think a Prophet Ibr Prophet Musa alayhi salat wa salam was given nine signs. Am I right? Nine signs. Who will be the ninth one? Inshallah. Tis'a. Just give me two more. A $5,000, I'll be happy. And I'll sit down. Almost. Two more. $5,000. Who will honor us? Inshallah. Who will honor us? And honor Ikna and the work and share in the work of Ikna. Who will be the ninth person? Inshallah. Where are you? 
Where are you? Nine. Tis'a. And the ninth one is? Nine. Allah Akbar. Number nine. And who will honor us to be the last one at $5,000? I know you're there. You know I know? I can smell you. Do you know that every human being have a unique smell? Absolutely. And I can smell your goodness coming from your seat. Who'll be the tenth one to give ten to five thousand dollars? Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Brothers and sisters, you ten brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, give you the best of this life and the best in the hereafter. May Allah continue to add to your sustenance. He's Ar Razak. May Allah give you over and over and over and over and over again. That's ten people, but you know what? Eleven sound a little bit better because it's odd. I know I said ten. I know, I know bad Siraj, bad, bad, bad Siraj. But can I get one more person $5,000? Just to make it even, uh, just to make it odd. Can I get one more? One more brother or sister. $5,000. And who will honor us tonight, inshallah? It's honor. It's an honor for Allah. Subhanallah, for us to spend in this way. One more person? 5,000? Okay. All right. No. Huh? Sisters? No sister raised their hand? No way. Sister, Al Sheikh believes that no sisters raised their hand. I don't believe that. Just to prove it, sisters, let one of you raise your hand and give $5,000. Just to prove the Sheikh is not 100% correct. Let one sister make a commitment for five thousand dollars. All right. Okay. Then I'm gonna do this. Hey, I'm finished. All right. Look, look. I'm finished. It's over. I want record number. I want a record number. Three hundred people. Three hundred people to give $20. How many can give, afford to give $20? Raise your hand. Hey, 20, come on. 20 is a magic number tonight. 20 in your hand. Come on, $20. All right. That looks like 300. All I want you to do is give $20 a week <laughs> for the next year. It's $1,000. 50 weeks, $20 a week, $20 a week. I want 300 people tonight to say I want to share in the work of ICNA. I can afford $20 a week. We don't smoke cigarettes. We don't, we don't smoke cigarettes. By the way, Brothers and sisters, by the way, I don't usually tell you to go to movies. Only one movie, Sheikh, I told people to go to see Malcolm X. But I'm recommending you to go see a movie. Go see Sicko by Michael Moore. If you don't want to go to the theater, rent a theater for all the Muslims and go see it. Trust me. You will, you will see Sheikh Masood. You will see something special. All right. Let's count. Number one. Number one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count. Where, where's uh, Naeem? I need get a, piece, get a piece of paper, Naeem. Get a piece of paper. I'm going to count. I'm going to count 300 people. Brothers and sisters, please, just wait a moment. It's going to be a record, inshallah. Naeem, it's going to be a record. Give me a clean piece of paper, Naeem. Quick, quick, quick. Put $1,000. No, no, no. Put $1,000 and put one. All right? Number one, raise your hand for $1,000. I'm going to start with the people right in front of me. If you can give just $20 a week for a year, inshallah, just raise your hand. Good. Two. Allah Akbar. Three. Good. Four. Allah Akbar. Five. Good. Go like this so I can see you. Five. Six. Seven. Good. I'm just dealing with this right here. Seven. Go like this. 
8, Allah Akbar. 9, 10, Allah Akbar. 11, Allah Akbar. This group right here, 12, this special group right here who know, who believe in the hereafter and want to do something for Allah. 12, in this group right here, 12, raise your hand, let me see you. 12, here, 13, Allah Akbar. 14, 15, this in this group right here, 15. Raise your hand like that, brother and sister, let me see. Spin, 15, 16, Allah Akbar. In this group right here, raise your hand. 16, 17, Allah Akbar. Right here in this group, right here for Allah. 17 people, a thousand dollars. Raise your hand in this group here. 18, Allah Akbar. 18, give me two more in this group. That's 20, inshallah. 18, $1,000. Make a pledge, make a commitment, make niya for Allah. Anyone else in this group? 18, anyone else? 19, Allah Akbar. Anyone else in this group? 19, and who will be the 20th in this group? $1,000, one more, inshallah. Allah Akbar, 20, 21, Allah Akbar. 22, Allah Akbar. 22 people in this group, all right. I'll save you guys for later. I'm coming right there. Sisters, raise your hand. 23, 24, good. Raise your hand. 25, 26, 27, Allah Akbar. Raise your hand so I can see you. 27, Allah Akbar. Sisters, raise your hand so I can see you. $1,000, $20 a week. 27, 28, Allah Akbar. Raise your hand. 29, 30, Allah Akbar. Raise your hand, sisters. $1,000 spend in the way of Allah. 31. Oh, no, that's a little baby. I'm sorry. 30. Um, I'm getting carried away. Anyone else? 31. All right. This group right here. Spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good. 32. 33. Allah had bomb. Raise your hand, brothers and sisters. Not you yet. Not yet. I'm coming. 33. 34. 35. 36. 37, raise your hand, brothers and sisters. Raise your hand, inshallah. 38, Allah Akbar. 39, Allah Akbar. Spin, 39, 40, Allah Akbar. 40, 41, Allah Akbar. 42, Allah Akbar. 42, spin in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 42, who else? Allahumma la Aisha illa Aisha akhirah. 43, Allah Akbar. There's no life except the life of the hereafter. The hereafter is it. You can't take it with you. Spin it now. Spend it now. 43. Who else? Yes, you can give your zakat. 44, 45. Allah Akbar. You can spend your zakat money for these functions. Inshallah. It's for the good. It's for the needy. Alhamdulillah. 45. Anyone else from this group? 45. Anyone else? Where? 46, 46, 47. Allah Akbar. Sisters, 48. Alhamdulillah. Okay. The last group. We got 48 so far, 49, 50, good, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, Allah Akbar, 55, spin, 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 56, sons of Adam, spin, 56, 57, Allah Akbar, spin, sons and daughters of Adam, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do the great work of Ikna, inshallah. We got minutes to go, moments to go, anyone else, 58, 59, Allah Akbar, who's number 60? 60, inshallah, 60, Allah Akbar. So brothers and sisters, spend in the way of Allah. We finish now. Please take your seats. We have two speakers to go, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we have another $5,000. Brothers and sisters, I want you to think about what you can give to Iqna, inshallah. We didn't push you too hard today, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Uh, before I close, anyone would like to make a